Okay, we are now recording. Going to let some of the nice people in. Hey, I'd like to welcome everybody. I know you're probably still getting on. You see only my name, right? My name, right? My name, right? Now, what we might what we might do, right, is um, we might possibly mute everybody when the program starts up to cut down on the background noise. We'll ask uh, Sean McGowan what he feels about that. Um, but we're going to be starting up pretty soon. We're going to start up at seven o'clock, so we still got a few minutes. I'm just going to admit people in at this point, and uh, the Mass Creekwood Library would like to welcome you. And uh, highly, I it's Sean. Um, brought up the chat window. So yeah, if you mute everybody, people maybe can write questions in chat as time goes on, or I could stop during the presentation every once in a while, take mute off if people want to ask questions. That sounds, that sounds great. Yeah, but I do have so the chat do box. I'm going um, to mute people as they come on then, okay? Yep, and I'll let them know that they can uh, write I'm their questions. Mute all actually, occasionally. Yep. Or okay. yeah, I'll just mute everybody as they come on. It's probably easier. Sounds good. Just still letting some people in. I'm going to mute myself in a moment too because uh, I've probably got some background noise coming from here from the library. Okay, I'm I'm here when you're ready for a few more minutes. Okay, maybe we'll wait one more minute or two, maybe even three, depending. <laughs> depending how we feel. Um, Okay, so for everybody that's here, we're, we're very happy. The Mass Equal Library is very happy that you're able to come down. My name is Lee Gundell. I'm an employee of the library. Um, we're happy today to have Sean McGowan uh, come down for us virtually and speak to us about, about Value Line. Um, we recently added that as, a, as an addition to the databases that we offer. And, um, it's uh, it'll be of interest to uh, any of you people that research that research uh, socks. So um, I kind of stole in for time a little bit, but uh, but Sean will come on in a minute and uh, and enlighten you. Yeah, we'll give it one more minute and make sure. Let's see. I see a few people to admit it. You're taking care of that, right, Lee? Yeah, yeah. I'll admit, I'll admit all the people. No worries there. And does everyone see my mouse moving? You see my mouse moving around on the Massapequa page? Yeah, I can see I can see the mouse, so I think we're good with that. All right, one more minute, then we'll start. Uh, all right, I have I have seven o'clock. Okay, if I if I start, Lee, yep, got it's the thumbs. Absolutely fine. I'm gonna mute myself. Thanks a lot. 
All right, got the thumbs up, great, yep. Uh, all right, thanks, Lee. Thanks, everyone, uh, for coming. As Lee mentioned, my name is Sean McGowan. I am with uh, Value Line Research, uh, that the library has been subscribing to our print surveys for, for many years, but uh, they've just subscribed to our digital version. So I'm gonna first go through um, what Value Line is, what we do, and, and what, what the library is receiving, and then I'm gonna go through the site and show people how to use it. So everyone is muted now because of uh, reverb. You know, sometimes you, you'll hear people in the background or buzzing or something. But if you have any questions, I do have a chat room uh, up. So you should be able to click chat and type a question. Also, I will try to stop uh, every once in a while through the presentation kind of at the stages to, to take questions and Lee can, uh, can take people off of mute. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into the presentation. So uh, first, as you can see on the screen, you're on the Massapequa Public Library website to get to Value Line uh, Research and Online Resources. Here, let me just turn that annotation on. Here, I'm gonna turn off annotation. I'm sorry. So I have to figure out how to turn that off. Clear. And then, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to play with the annotations here for a minute. And then under here, there's uh, business and finance. Now this is, let's see, clear, clear all drawings. Business and finance, and uh, which is on the side here, and under business and finance, uh, you scroll to the bottom and there's value line. So just to remind everybody, it was research online resources, business and finance value line. And once you click on that, you'll come to the value line main page, which is the dashboard. And that looks like this. So this is the dashboard. This is the main page you start at on value line. Uh, now, what is value line? Value line has been in business since 1931. Uh, we have the Value Line Investment Survey. That's our flagship product. It's coverage of 1,700 large cap companies. So there's going to be a little bit of numbers here at first. 1,700 large cap companies that we divide into roughly 100 industries. Uh, that's proprietary. We rank them in the Value Line world one is good, the higher you go, less good. So if an industry is ranked one, that means a lot of people are paying attention. If it's ranked 100, not a lot of people are paying attention these days. We take those 1,700 companies, we divide them into the 100 industries, and we have roughly 75 analysts. And if you are a value line analyst, you're covering a certain number of companies, maybe 14 companies on average, um, that you have to cover all these companies, they may cover two, maybe even three industries, they may be spread out across a few industries. Um, and every 13 weeks, you issue a report for each company that you cover. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not all the companies every 13 weeks, it's each week you're issuing a report for, for a company. So this week, maybe you're covering Apple. Um, so every 13 weeks, you put out a report about Apple. 52 divided by 13 is four, 52 weeks in a year. So every company in the value line investment survey has four reports put out about it a year. And there's lots of different information, including the proprietary ranking. I'm going to bring up reports so you'll see what those reports look like. But that's what value line sells. That's the information that professional investors and, and retail investors look for, uh, and that's what the library is subscribing to, a weekly group of reports. It was about 120 reports a week that go out in, in the value line report. So that's sort of the, the introduction of what value line does. Then I'm gonna go into the site. So before I do, any questions about what value line does? You can do it in the chat room or if, uh, if Lee wants to unmute. Well, I'm going to try the chat room first. Hopefully, people can find it. And Lee, you can hear me, right?
Yep, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, can you get an alert when reports come out? A, a question just came up on the uh, on the chat room. So the question is, can you get an alert when reports come out? For the library version, uh, no. So the website that I'm going to show you today, anyone can subscribe to, but it does cost whatever it costs, 700 a year. It depends on the level of service. So what the library is providing to you is that you don't have to go and pay those hundreds of dollars a year. But alerts are when you have your own personal volume line account. Thank you for that question. OK, so. Um, here, let's get into the site. As I mentioned before, this is the uh, dashboard. I think I've learned annotation. So with that in mind, here's the dashboard. What to see on this page? A few things. Up here is the uh, one second is the um, box where you would look for a certain company, and then there are three items that get updated every week. So I'm afraid I'm logged into to my login, which is Value Line Publishing uh, up here. Yours would say Massapequa. What I have uh, put squares around summary and index selection opinion and VLIS current issue, those are the three items that will be live on Massapequa's page. Uh, they'll be blue. You can select those. So let me um, go to annotations. Sorry. I want to just clear these uh, these circles here. And the box up here that I mentioned, there are two ways that everybody who works with Value Line, there are two things that everyone who works with Value Line does. Um, two things they're looking for. One is is idea validation, which is let me know about a company. I'm interested in a certain company. And the other is idea generation, which is what, do you, what does value line like? And there are many ways to find what value line likes. But the easiest way to find out a company you're interested in is this box right up here where it says company name or symbol. Uh, I mentioned Apple before. So you can type in the symbol or you can type in the company name. Uh, I typed in the symbol, I click on the company and what we're about to get is the digital report. I'm gonna assume there are people here who have seen the, the traditional printed reports, have gone to the library and seen that what the, the, the value line investment survey current issue that gets mailed and 120 or so reports in a week. This page right here is the digital version of that. You can get to the traditional version. You actually do it right here under PDF reports. Um, before I mentioned that there are four reports a year about every, for each company that is in the value line investment survey. So in Apple's case, the last one was Christmas day, then September 25th, uh, June 26th, March 27th of last year. So the next one is coming out for Apple probably next week. But in the digital report, there are lots of things to look for. Um, you can see the last price. You can see the 18 month target price range where we think it can go. And our two proprietary, well, the industry rank here, I mentioned industries before. Uh, Apple is in computer peripherals, which is 14 of 97. So we have roughly, we have 100 industries uh, today that we're, we've broken up the survey into. There's timeliness. Is it a good time to buy the stock? And safety, will the price stay around here? Mm. Oh, I heard somebody. <laughs> Was that a question? You can just, uh, if any questions, feel free anytime to ask any questions. Oh, sorry. Just... I didn't realize I wasn't muted. Let me that, mute. That's okay. Actually, it's nice and quiet. That's good. <laughs> um, so <laughs> was that, that helped you with timeliness. And the timeliness is a one. And the timeliness and the safety rankings are one to five. One is good. Five is bad. So if a company has a timeliness of one, Value Line likes it right now. If it has a timeliness of five, we don't. Safety of one thinks this price is very reliable. Safety of five is not so reliable. So those are the three, three of the big rankings, uh, proprietary rankings, industry rank, safety, and timeliness. Then what you do is you go here to those traditional reports and you find out why. You know, why does value line think the way it does? Why does the analyst think the way that the way they're thinking? And 
You can go to the last report. So I'm going to click on the December 25th report. And here it is. So anyone who's ever uh, looked at a volume line uh, report will, will find this familiar. This is the printout. And here on the printout, there's timeliness and safety right in here for back in December 25th. So the timeliness uh, on Christmas was of a three and the digital timeliness now is a two. So we think Apple's doing better. Uh, one thing to do is to go to what the bottom of the report, this, this area that's typed up, and see what's in bold, because whatever is in bold is uh, new from the last time. If you were that analyst, the analyst name is uh, Justin Hellman down here, you can see it. If you were Justin, you looked at your last report, you'd updated all your numbers, you updated everything and you wrote what's in what's new. And, and I know for a fact from talking to, to value line users um, that they, they like to flip through these and see anything in bold to see if there's anything they don't know. So of course that's not so easy to do um, in, a, in a, you can't flip through pages in a digital world, but what you can do is sort and bring the stuff value line likes to the top. So I'm going to go back here to value line. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble with the um, uh, bar that pops up. Here we go. And back to value line research. I'm here. I am in the digital report. A little, a few more things about the digital report. There's this um, vertical gray bar right here that I'm circling with the mouse, and I just hovered my mouse over. We call it a tray. The tray slides out. The items here rank financial strength. They're all already showing up, but the items down here, charting, financial statements, quotes, those you have to select to have them pop up. So I'm gonna click charting. I'm gonna do this one or two more times for other companies. And these are, we call them modules. You can move them around. I'm gonna click this uh, diagonal box here and it brings charting to the front. And it defaults to 10 years, but I'm going to look at the last year. And you know, unlike most companies, when COVID hit, Apple stock took off because everyone started buying computers to be at home. I'll bring up some other companies where the stock probably drops in March and then goes up. But it's interesting because you can go through by date and then say, OK, this is around the beginning of September. And it, it actually dropped right after that. You can go back here and you can go to that PDF report, which was right around the time it started to drop and see what was going on. And you can you know, bring up your, your report and do what I did before. We're still time in this of three. Uh, and then you could see what they said in bold. So is this all making sense to everybody? For any, any questions, feel free. Um, I'm just gonna keep going. So I'm back in Apple's digital report. I'm going to go back to the dashboard because that was one company that I followed. And here on the dashboard, as I mentioned, there's the three items. Oh, it's, I'm afraid it signed me out. I have to sign out to sign back in. Sorry about that. Back to the dashboard. I'm not on Massapequa's site. So everything here is in blue. Um, I'm going to try another company. Um, I was just curious. I actually haven't checked them out. I was curious how they're doing Coca-Cola. So I'm going to click them again, bring up a digital report. And uh, here's a digital report for Coke. They have a timeliness of three, a safety of three. Um, last price is $5, 18 months. Because a lot of professionals use value line, professional investors who, who, who do have funds to invest. Um, so this is a high price stock, $305. You can go to the PDFs and you can find out the last four reports and see what you think, see what they think and why. Go back to the dashboard here. And that was idea uh, validation. Tell me about something. I looked at Apple and I looked at Coke and I typed them up in here. But now from this point on really, um, I'm going to be going into idea generation. What is value line like? Different ways to do it. The, the obvious one, the VLIS current issue, the value line investment survey current issue. Oh, I see you have a question. 
How do you access the PDF report? Can't see full screen or PDF link. Okay, I'm gonna get back to a digital report and I'm gonna show you how. So I'm clicking under the dashboard, VLIS current issue. And this is the 120 or so reports that came out this week. Because remember I mentioned there's 1700 companies, roughly 1700 companies in total. Each company is followed by, by analysts and each company gets one, four reports put out about it a year, but each week we have 120 of those reports. So this is this week's grouping. You'll notice it right here, it says page one of three and it's displaying, displaying 50 at a time. So if I make it, 250 at a time, it's going to be one of one because only roughly 120 companies. And I'm going to sort it by timeliness. Each column has a heading, company name, ticker, timeliness, industry, stock price. You can sort by any of those column headers. I'm going to sort by timeliness and I'm bringing all of the companies that Value Line likes in this week's group of reports that have a timeliness of one to the top. Um, how do you access reports or pull links? Does Value Line evaluate funds? Value Line does have modules that evaluate mutual funds and ETFs, but not in the package Massapequa has. Um, how does Value Line select the 1,700 companies? That I couldn't tell you. They're large cap. They're worth $5 billion or more. I'd have to go to the head of the, the analyst department to say how they chose those. I do know companies come on and off them, uh, but there's just a bunch of different systems they use. I, mean, I couldn't tell you exactly how they how they uh, figure out the 1700 companies. But I, the one thing I do know for a fact is they're large cap companies. So they're, they're 5 billion or more. Uh, okay, so here's the uh, this group of reports. We have Colgate Palmolive at the top, stock price $75, safety of one. I can go straight to the Colgate report, but I'm gonna actually click the link to Colgate and I'm gonna bring that to the top. And they're back to digital report. And for the person who asked about how you, you access the PDF reports, so I'm not sure what you can see on your page, but let me, um, let's see if I can make this, this um, line a little thicker, maybe. So it's right here, all the way to the right, PDF reports. Let me change the color if I can do that. So here, maybe the red helps. PDF reports, when you get to the digital report, here's the name of the company in the left, far right PDF reports. Let me clear the drawings. And I'm gonna click those PDF. And here are the last four reports. Can you see that? I'm gonna wait a little bit. I'm waiting for the chat to see if they can see the, uh, the four. Okay, I don't see the response. Hopefully it'll pop up. So here are the last four. The last report for Colgate was March 19th. No surprise because it's in this week's group of reports. Uh, okay, I got, a, I got a thumbs up. Good, you can see that. So the last one, the last four reports for Colgate were March 19th, December 18th, uh, September 18th, and, and June 19th. So here they are. I could click in and see why this has a timeliness of one or a safety of one. This is what I was looking at for this week's group of reports. Uh, then there's the entire value line report. So if you want to see the entire value line report, you actually go to browse research here. I'm going to also go to find ideas in a few minutes, but under browse research is where you can see all 1700 companies and where they stand with value line today. So where are those? And I'm gonna click browse research. Here's the browse research. And you can actually see what I've looked at so far because there's Coca-Cola uh, and there's Colgate. Uh, you can ignore those two for now. Coca-Cola and Colgate. As you go on, the companies we look at are going to build. I'm under browse research. So if you were sitting down a value line and looking through the different ways and you looked at the click through a couple of companies and you're ready to, to move on, you can come back to browse seat research where you can see them and you can decide which ones you might want to print out or save to your computer. Uh, and you can do that by either hitting here on the on the right current list. It's a lot like that that tray that slid out and here's Coca-Cola and here's Colgate and you can go and just click on a report right here if you want to and, and print it out. 
So you're getting an idea of how, how basically the goal is to, to find out what value line likes and then get to that traditional report and take a look at it. So I'm gonna go back here to browse research. Uh, and I mentioned that, you know, I showed you this week's survey, but if you wanna see the entire survey where every, um, every uh, stock in the survey stands with value line is right here under coverage universe, analyst covered. Let me go and click that. So analyst covered is all 1700 companies. Now, if you can see this, this is page one of 34, where before it says one of three. So I see that, uh, oh, yep, uh, well then secondly. So display, I'm gonna change it to 500. I'm gonna do exactly what I did before, which is click timeliness. Now there's a lot of items with a timeliness of one because it's the entire report, not just this week's report. And then you can kind of go through and see if there's anything you like, and you can click on the company and go to the digital like we did before, or you can click on the, the traditional PDF on the right. So yeah, Lee, do you want to go off mute for a second? Does anyone have, anyone want to ask any questions? You know what, I'll give it a try. I'll, I'll try to unmute it. Well, I'll ask everybody to unmute. So, uh, you know, when the message comes up, if you, if you want to be unmuted, by all means, unmute yourself. Yeah, feel free. And if, if we get reverb or trouble with audio, we'll go back to, to it. But uh, all right, cool. So feel free to unmute and ask any questions if you'd like. So here we are in this week's current reports. And I'm just going to grab one at random. I don't know what Balchum Corp does, although I see they're in the chemical specialty industry. Um, so I'm gonna go and click that. This is gonna be repetitive, but that's the point. It's really very simple. Value line has very complicated uh, proprietary ranking that we're trying to get you to be able to figure out what you might be interested in quickly. Sorry, so was there a question there? Thought I heard a voice. So this is gonna get repetitive. Here we are. This company has a rank of safety of three, a timeliness of one. Let's go to the chart. I've slid the chart up by just hovering the mouse over. It actually snuck away from me. I'm gonna do it again. Oh, all right, third time's a charm. Charting, I'm gonna bring that chart to the front. I'm gonna take a look at the last year and I'm gonna see where that was. Actually, that's been on a nice slow climb as well. Although they had some issues back in January. So you can do this for, for any company that you like. There's uh, different modules, the business description, the industry that this company is in, that you can go and always bring the module to the front and print it out if you would like. Uh, these are the list of the companies that are in that industry. So just a reminder of how I got there. All the modules in the digital page, I clicked industry, I brought it to the front, and then I did the list of companies and I was looking through them and you can print this out. And as always, you can go right here to the PDFs. So now you know how to look at the entire survey and this week's survey. And I'm going to other ideas in a few minutes. Uh, any other questions? I just have one quick question. Sure. On the top where it had the different financial high level pieces where it said like return on shareholders or can you sort by that also? So I'm going, I'm just opening one. Are we looking here at the digital? Yes, so if you went down a little bit further, right? Mm -hmm. Where it says the line percent of return on shareholder equity. You know what? So in here, no. Now let me find this field because I'm going to show you where you can. Which I'm sorry, which field are you looking at? Return okay. on capital. Yeah. Uh, okay, capital. I see it. Return yes. on shareholder equity, which is actually mm -hmm. blank for Colgate. Um keep that. Well, let's you know what? Let's just jump to something here. I'm going to go to find ideas. Now, we saw that Coke was $305 um, a share. And, and maybe people aren't too interested in buying a $305 a share company that has a good timeliness, although I think their timeliness was lousy. Their timeliness was three. What you can do is you can build a template of, of a filter, just like if you're shopping online. I was looking at bicycles and you know I was saying hybrid, men's, large, that kind of thing. 
So mm -hmm. you can do that, except you can do it for the stocks that Value Line likes. And you do that here under Find Ideas, Screener, and every single line item here is something you could put into your screen. Now, I've never actually looked for that return, but let's take a look. Um, because as you can see, there's a lot of fields to build a screen with. So there's return on shareholders equity right here. So let's do this. Let's, I'm gonna to go to this value line preset screen. And I'm gonna do two things, three things. First, I'm gonna choose this template of timely stocks and timely industries. Uh, you know what timeliness is now. A one is good, a five is bad. Or in the industry's case, a one is good, 97 is bad. This is just a quick template of all the companies in Value Line survey this week that have a timeliness of one or two that are in the top 35 and you get 210 companies. Well, I'm gonna add two fields. I'm gonna click stock price. And I'm going, it didn't change yet because I haven't lowered it, but I'll just go ahead and lower it real quick to like, here. I'm going to keep it a little high because of his other field. And then percent on um, return on shareholders equity. Okay. And I'm going to add that field here. And you tell me last year is in the range of what? Zero to what should I lower that to? To 30%, I'd say. All right. Let's go up here. Let's see if we have any actually too high 45 <laughs> so let me lower maybe the price range a little bit okay we got to six so i don't know if this is the kind of field but the point being hopefully you got from this you can mix and match any field you want on the left to create uh, a filter and i'm going to show you at the end under investor education where in fact value line analysts do just that to choose a stock that they like and they build a field. But is this making sense what I did with the, yes. the mix? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so here's the six. Now I have my six companies and I'm gonna sort by timeliness. And I only have one, London Mining, um, but there's the close price. And this is a, a thing they're gonna change about the browser. Unfortunately, if you click this company, the, the screen, the filter goes away. But if you right click it, Interested in any of these companies? I'll choose one if you want to look at any. Like, uh, I'm sure Huntington, I don't know what they do. I'm right clicking Huntington. I'm opening a link in a new tab, which is here. I had to click the tab on the top to open that up. Um, and we're back to the digital report, which you've seen. Last price, $16, down 41 cents. We think it can go to $26. Timeliness of two. Let's open the last PDF, which was March 5th. And I'm gonna expand it a little bit and I'm gonna scroll down to the bold and they've agreed to merge with TCF Financial and Michigan Bank. So that's what leads in bold. So now you've found that company in a, in a price range, hopefully that works for you. Any questions on that? That would, to me, that's sort of a big helpful tool. Oh, hopefully you know how to how to get there. Um, yeah. And do it again. Sorry. Can we do it again? Yeah. Sure. Please. So you know what? I'm going to start from the dashboard. So I'm on the dashboard. This is you've gone to Massapequa Resources Business and clicked Value Line, and you're at the dashboard. And you don't have a company in mind, and you're not particularly interested in seeing this week's groupings because you'd rather get to a company that's in your price range. So head to here to find ideas. Let me just annotate that um, here, find ideas. Because you really want to get a sense of what Value Line likes this week that's in your price range. So I'm going to clear all of that. And I'm going to click find ideas. And I'm going to go here to the screener, which is just like using any filter on any website if you're trying to buy something. You're just trying to narrow it down to what, what you're looking for, except it is actually stocks that analysts recommend. So I'm gonna click the screener and here we are on this page that's right now a blank page until you choose fields on the left. 
And what the, the, the preset screen that I like to show people, the template I like to show people is timely stocks in timely industries. I had to click value line preset screen and timely stocks and timely industries. And I was validated myself when I went to the video that I'm going to show you where the, the, the value line analysts talk about stocks to pick and this is something you can do. And they start out with this preset of a timeliness of one and two and an industry rank. And then they add the fields they want on the left-hand side. I'm just gonna add stock price. And I'm gonna lower it down to a range I'm more interested, which is maybe somewhere in the $20 range. And I have 12 companies, uh, most of them with a timeliness of two, two of them with a timeliness of one, and at this point, it's what I've been showing you before. You can either go to that digital report by clicking the name of the company on the left, or you can actually, oh, actually you do have to go on, I'm sorry, on this one. And here's the digital report. And it's got a financial strength of C, a timeliness of one, a safety of four. And here are the last four PDFs. Did that, by doing it again, did that help? Yes, thank okay. you. Okay, yep. Um, so that's, that's the screen of the find ideas. Uh, I'm going to go back to find ideas. There's really two things to see under find ideas. One is the screener, which I showed you. And the next one is the model portfolio. I will be going into investment education where I'm going to show you the videos I was talking about, but, or how to access those videos. I'm not going to actually play the videos. So model portfolio here. The model portfolio, it's, it's portfolios that we've created four of them. You can see on the left-hand side, portfolio one, two, three, and four. These are groupings of stocks that our analysts that we would buy if we were allowed to. We're not because of conflict of interest. But if we were allowed to, we broke them into four portfolios. The portfolio one is for more aggressive investors. And this has an explanation of how companies make it into this portfolio. These are stocks we think might do well soon. You see a lot of timeliness of one and twos, a few threes. Um, there are people who subscribe to this digital service or even the print service and don't do anything other than come to this page once a week to see if portfolio one has changed. They use that as their, their jumping off point to see what they're interested in, in trading. Portfolio two is uh, more conservative investors. You're willing to hold the stock for three months or five months. Uh, portfolio three is you're willing to hold the stock for years. Uh, so for investors with three to five year horizon, I'm not sure if you can read that. It says portfolio three stocks with long-term price growth potential, primarily suitable for investors with three to five year horizon. And portfolio four, uh, which are dividends. So suitable for investors interested in current income. Uh, these are companies that if you want to get dividends, meaning you, you buy the stock, you get dividend checks. Uh, these are the companies we would suggest parking your money for, for dividend checks. Um, so I got here to the model portfolios through find ideas. But people who are familiar with value line who have been going into the library and getting the printed reports. So I've mentioned before, there are three items we send. The, the value line investment survey, current issue, the summary index and the selection and opinion. The selection and opinion has the model portfolios among other information. And uh, it's a PDF that you can download. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it and it's a PDF. Um, anyone familiar with this document? Anyone might've used value line before? Uh, NR equals not related. Um, I'll have to go back and check that Lisa, I'm not sure. I'm sorry, I'll have to go back. Um, but this is the, this is the um, selection and opinion. There's a lot of information in here, but that also has this week's port model portfolio. So if you wanna print it out as a PDF this way, you can. Um, so one, two, three, and four, and then you can go a little further into other income stocks with worthwhile total return potential, other, other fields, and if you wanna read that. So I got that. Um, from going under quick links to selection and opinion. The other third final document is a summary and index, and that's got more data as well, all both PDFs. 
So that's kind of how you use the website. So Lisa, NR, I'm afraid I don't know where we saw that. Can you tell me where you saw that? Uh, someone's asking NR equals not rated. I don't remember where it was. Of course, if I if you want to tell me the company, I'll go to browse research here and I'll just I like this display better. And this is everything we've looked at today. So I think the last one might have been uh, Wide Open West. And let's see if there's a, an R in here. A Pfizer? I think I was seeing a Pfizer. I'm sorry, I don't know where you saw that. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm sorry about that. So let me show you the final thing. So I'm going to that because I've showed you how to use the site. That you come to the dashboard, that you go to quick links, summary and index, selection and opinion, this week's current issue. You can go to browse research to see everything. You can go to this box up here to enter a certain company. You can go to find ideas if, to get the screener or get the model, another way to get to the model portfolio. The final thing I'm going to show you here is investment education. And there's two things under investment education to show you. One is glossary. And actually, let's take a look at something. Um, someone had asked, is NR equal not rated? I don't know if this will be here, but I'm going to go to N. And let's go to NR. Uh, no, it's not there. Sorry, I saw NA was there, but not NR. If you have a question about what something means, it didn't work for NR, you can go here under the alphabet and get, a, get, get an idea of what that is. The next thing to show you is tools and guides. And under tools and guides, there's how to's, there's PDFs of how to's, although I'm going to actually send some, how, some other newer PDFs to Lee who, who might be able to post them on the site. Um, but I'm going to visit the YouTube channel, which you don't need to have the subscription to do. You can just find Value Line on YouTube. But here, what I like to show you is well, a couple things from the bottom is some instruction how to videos here. But the next thing is this one stock to buy right now series. You can see October. Uh, November, they did a thing on options, December, January, and February. And you can see that each one averages a little under 2,000 views. October was 1.8, um, December was 1.8, January 1.9. So far, the one released in February, 1.1. This is a, a, a about a half hour video from a value line analyst, usually two of them. They have a company in mind. Um, they spend about 20 minutes defending why they like that company and they use the screener the way that, that we use the screener. They, they start with timely stocks and timely industries and they use other fields to justify a stock and they put that up. And, and I personally think that the, these, these 2000 people who come here every month to get a, a stock tip, basically, they probably just scrub through the first 20 minutes where the person's just defending their argument and just get to the chase, which is what's the company that they like. So you can just load this, scratch through the first 20 minutes and see a company you like. Although I would recommend if you just watch one, just once, you get a great idea of how to use the screener. Um, so uh, Lee, Lee suggested NR might mean net revenue. I'm not sure, NR might mean net revenue, I'm not sure. So uh, here we go. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of it. I'm going to go back to the dashboard. I believe I've covered everything. And the, as I mentioned before, you know, this is it. We did a search. We went to the selection and opinion, and went to find ideas and plot up a company. And before you go, end by going to browse research, and here they all are. Everything that we just did, right here. And you can go ahead and click on the ones you like and print out the reports of the one you, ones you, you like. Um, I don't leave, you want to take it off of mute, but then did I miss anything? You know what, it seemed like a great presentation to me. So uh, thank, thanks a Thank bunch. you. Um, I'm going to ask everybody to come off mute just in case, just in case anybody else has any questions. Um, you don't have to ask a question, but if anything okay. occurs to you, oh, I'm getting, oh, hold on. A really quick question. Yeah. Is once you get on from the library website, is a password required, or do you just go right into the into the, the value line from the library website? Lee, I believe it's the case that you have to type in the library card number on your library card. I would okay. think so. If you um, if you have a library card number, you can type that right in. Otherwise, you can come in and apply for one. 
Okay. Um, if you if you don't want to come into the library, you can apply for a digital one. I can send you information on that um, okay. if you need that. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I would. I strongly suspect you have to uh, enter your barcode number. But other than that, you're fine. Okay. So the value line um, service is just on the just Mass Speaker Public Library, and we just we log in with a library card, and, and that's it. Yeah, I'll go back to it now. Uh, hang on a second. Let me just get rid of those uh, annotations. There, I'll go here. Um, here I am. I'll, I'll I'll start from the home page. Okay. So Mass Speaker Public Library, research and online resources right here, kind of in the center. Okay. And then uh, business and finance on the left. And then head on down. And then you said- yeah, I have a question. Sure. I'll do a quick plug. Someone asked if there were funds. I see Morningstar. Morningstar is a competitor of Island, but they do funds, I believe. They're mostly funds. So you can go there for funds. Okay, another question, sorry. Yes, I'm still having problems logging in. We just tried to and we couldn't do it. It wouldn't accept it, the, uh, the number to the card. No, I couldn't find the link. Yeah, or the link, we couldn't find the link to get there. You, you know something, um, if you give me your email address, I can just send you the, actually, you know what? Let me just give you the link from off of, uh, give me one second, I'll work on this for a second. Um, yeah, you can put the link in the chat I'll put room. Link too. up in the chat for you. Um, just give me, just give me a sec. I'll see can, if I can. Can you see the chat room? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. So uh, there should be sort of a bar when you're in Zoom. That's that sh maybe with three dots, and it's sh with the three dots, if you click it, you should see the word chat. And if you do that, it'll open up the the discussion that's been going on in the chat room during the presentation. I I can't. I don't know exactly what you're seeing on the screen, but since you're in the meeting, there should be some some zoom type bar in there that might say participants or something um okay i'm looking at the chat now there you go lee is gonna if you scroll to the bottom lee is gonna post the link that you click on and you click on that it should open up if you bookmark it uh, now it's gonna take me a minute because the thing is it comes up differently. It's a different link on my computer at the library than it is like uh, for um, people to log in from home. So I gotta. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's very important. Well, it. from myself over here because there's some background noise. Yeah. So what you can do is just head to the Massapequa. Uh, what's the site exactly? Massapequalibrary.org. And if you do that on a on a another uh, tab of your browser. MassapequaLibrary.org, you're on the home page. If you're on the home page, look for research and online resources in the center, and that'll take you to the database page on the left hand side. And I hope I'm not going too fast. Can you pop this up there? Other than that, any other questions? If not, I think we're kind of, I think that, that, that's everything. You know what, just give me one more second. What I'm gonna do sure. is I'm gonna give you my email address. Uh, if people are interested in that, just in case they need to get the link. Uh, I just put the link up in the chat. You might see it there. But um, oh, yeah, I'll give you my email address just in case you have any other problems with it, like uh, for from us at the library. Um, you know, maybe one of us can assist you. Maybe if something's really bad, we can turn to Sean. Um, sure. But I, I'd like to thank him again for a great presentation. Um, oh, thank you. Yes, it was a great presentation. It was very helpful. Oh, uh, uh, thank you. I, I, I hope it helps. Okay. I wrote that out much like Tarzan. I said, my lead, my El Gundel at massequallibrary.org. But, um, <laughs> but that is my email, though. I got it. Thank you so much. So just, just you can email me if you have a question, and I can send you an appropriate link. Great. You Thank you again. Email the reference department as well if you like. Yeah. Okay. Thanks again. Thanks. Hi. Thanks a lot, Sean. Thanks everybody for coming down. Yeah. Thank you. Thank everyone. Thanks everyone. You're welcome. This was. It's always fun. I I like doing with patrons because 
people, you guys will use it. So enjoy. <laughs> I'm gonna. Thanks. Have a great night. You too. I'm gonna get going. Lee, take care. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank nice. you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Okay, Lee. Thank you. It was a good, good, good show. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Bye.